Tourneur was the son of a renowned filmmaker named Maurice Tourneur. And Jacques started out at, like many directors did, like Fred Zinnemann and others, at the, at the MGM lot making MGM shorts. They had this huge shorts department and uh, Tourneur ended up becoming quite the director. He, he worked under Val Luton at RKO and made several of those great Val Luton suspense films. And of course, he's best remembered for the apocryphal film noir out of the past with, uh, with Robert Mitchum, Kirk Douglas and Jane Greer. He had a very good touch with actors and story and was a really, really accomplished, uh, quite an accomplished director who made some significant films of, of The Flame and the Arrow is one of them. This does seem a little different for him. Yeah, I, I think it was, but I think it's more of a change of where Hollywood and the studios were going, the same way where Lancaster was this film noir, ominous, tortured, leading man. And then all of a sudden now he's, you know, jumping off of castle parapets and so forth. And I think, you know, in those days with the studio system, uh, you did what the studios wanted to make. Jack Warner signing Burt Lancaster, he was loading up because the stars increasingly had more and more power after World War II, the legitimate stars. And there was only a handful of them. There, there, wasn't, there weren't a lot of them. And so Jack Warner, uh, for all of his bluster and, and his, his malapropisms and so forth, he was a sharp businessman and he realized that the assembly line of the 1930s where you had Michael Curtiz making six mo 30 movies in like five years where they were just cranking out movies where they owned their own theaters and they had to keep putting product in the theaters. Now, by 1950, you had television uh, competing uh, for, the, th for uh, the movies and you also had the antitrust suit uh, from the 1940s that forced the theater chains like Warner, the studios that had theater chains like Warner Brothers to divest themselves of their theaters. So Warner realized that his studio that used to crank out these movies and be, have the theaters, the movies, had the story department. In 1950, Jack Warner laid off the entire story department at Warner Brothers. And the studio became more of a smorgasbord of hiring Burt Lancaster's production company, Al Alfred Hitchcock, uh, um, uh, Feldman, who produced A Streetcar Named Desire, and it became more of a deal-making thing where we'll, we'll finance part of it, and we'll finance the production, and we'll do the distribution, but these production companies bore some of the costs, shared some of the money, and it, it was more of a, um, uh, you know, order off a menu rather than an assembly line. So I think the whole, the whole um, uh, way of Hollywood and the whole studio system really changed. And the directors and the actors were forced to adapt to the flavor of the month, so to speak.